Welcome to our video today. We have some of our lovely Chichester College students here ready to chat about their experiences, answer some questions and offer some advice for those of you who may be in the process of applying to Chichester College right now. My name is Holly Stokes and I'm the School and Community Liaison Officer for Chichester College. We'll start by introducing our students here today who will tell you what course they're studying, how long they've been here with us and any other roles that they have here within the com college community. Let's start with Sophie Sargent. Hi everyone, um, so my name is Sophie Sargent. Um, I've been at the college for four years now. Um, I first joined the college in 2017 as a childcare student and I am now the sabbatical student president in my third term. Lovely, let's go to Imogen. Hi, my name's Imi and I do level three childcare and I'm in my second year of it and I really love it. Last year I was the student rep and that was a really good experience as well. Fab, Sophie Eve. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm currently on a level three childcare course and I'm also on my second year. Let's go to Kieran. Hi, I'm Kieran. I'm on an access course to medicine. Uh, access courses are fortunately only one year long and so I'm in my first year. I'm also a student rep and student exec. Perfect. Jen. Hi, I'm Jen. Um, I'm doing level three biomedical science. I'm in my second year. I'm also a student rep. And Ruby now. Hi, I'm Ruby. I'm also a student rep and I'm studying childcare and education and I'm in my second and final year of the course. Let's hear from Tom. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm doing level three for the tech and computing and I'm on my first year. So I've been at the college for about half of that now. And finally, let's come to Abby. Hi, I'm Abby. I do stage management and technical theatre level three and I'm in my first year. Great, so that's our, our clan for today. And um, so let's kick off with uh, some questions uh, to you guys. Um, the first one that we've got is, uh, what's your background? Um, did you have any prior experience or interest to, prior to studying your course? And I'm gonna come to Jen on that one, please. Yep, so I, before doing my course, I really didn't do any scientific things um but i did it at gcse and now i enjoy it um i initially started on a different course um that was more english based um and then decided that wasn't for me um so yeah i didn't have any prior experience but now through the college i've been able to do work experience in a hospital because i hope to go into the hospital um and yeah i think it's just been pretty easy to get into amazing um sophie you popped your hand up yeah, before college, um, I did a week in year 10 where I, I was at a nursery and that was what really like encouraged me to do childcare because before that I hadn't really done any childcare, had any, any experience with it. Great, and moving on to Ruby as well. Hi, so um, I was doing A-levels initially and as a part of this I had to arrange some work experience so I visited a to a school for children with special needs and disabilities and that's what made me realise that um, I wanted to go down the childcare and education route so I sort of realised that A-levels wasn't for me and wasn't the best way to get there so I changed course and then took this route instead. Those great answers, we'll move on to the next question. Um, what are your hopes or ambitions for the future? And I'm going to come to uh, Imi on that one. Um, so I've got quite a few. Um, my main one would to be to work with children who have um, learning difficulties. Um, I find this really interesting because my um, lecturer, she did um, this, I think she said five years of working with a charity and it just seems so amazing, like the experience she has had from it and what she's gained. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. Really nice. Has anyone else got some hopes and ambitions for the future. Sophie? Yeah, I think I have a quite unusual one. Um, 
I'm actually going to this uh, university called Norland and it's uh, quite specialised in childcare and training you up to be a higher nanny and it's something that I never really knew, I didn't know anything about it until my uh, teacher went through it in class and that's what really encouraged me and luckily a few weeks ago I actually got a place there. Oh that's amazing um so with, with you saying that this is something that's developed since you've been at college it's been recommended by your course leaders it's not necessarily the pathway that you thought you were going to take when you started is that right? Yeah so when I started I knew I didn't want to go to university and I didn't want to do any higher education and it wasn't until my uh, teachers uh, talked to me about it and my student tutor I had a one-to-one -one with me and we talked about my options and how there's uh, so much more than just the your average university out there uh, so that's what really encouraged me to do it. That's amazing. Uh, Ruby you put your hand up. Yeah so my ambition is to be a forest school leader which is also something that I discovered through doing this course so for anyone who doesn't know it's like really outdoor based education with children. So they learn lots of skills um, like fire lighting, survival skills, you do lots of bushcraft. It's like a really, it's a refreshing approach to children's education. And um, thanks to all the placement that we've done with this course, I've now ended up working in a forest school and already started on that path towards it. So it's been really great. Really exciting to be able to do that alongside alongside your studies as well. Um, up next, I've got Tom. Well, my hope for the future is to, once I finish the first year of my course, to move into the next one. Um, and once I do, um, complete all that, I'm hoping to move up to degree level and end up getting a degree in computing. Brilliant pathway. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next question, which is why did you choose Chichester? And I'm going to come to Kieran for that one, please. The main thing that grabbed my attention about Chichester was the campus. Like I saw the, although I haven't been able to use it because of COVID, but the sort of rock climbing wall and the gym equipment looked amazing. And um, when I came for my interview um, with the person who leads the course, like they were just so enthusiastic and so knowledgeable about everything. Like I know you're going to be a great teacher and I'm going to be able to learn plenty from you. And um, yeah, and the fact that it would give me hope for the future for studying uh, medicine. That's a really nice point that you mentioned about how enthusiastic your course leaders were. I think that's across the board. I think most most course leaders, if not all of them, are going to be really passionate about their subjects. And I think that reflects in how they deliver it, deliver their subjects as well. Um, Jen, let's go to you next. Yeah, um, so initially I chose Chichester um, for A-levels because um, I feel like that's what you're told when you go from GCSEs that you have to go into A-levels or it's like the only proper path. I think that's how it's kind of advertised. Um, so I did a year of that and I'm, I'm just not an A-level person. Um, so as soon as I got there, they were they showed me what I could I was able to do with a BTEC course. Um, and I think the main thing for me was they didn't make the BTEC feel any less. Um, it still felt like a proper qualification and that they immediately were showing me where I could go um, with my course, which I think obviously you're taking a course for the future. So knowing where you can go with it is really important. Um, and yeah, like uh, like Kieran said, the teachers just seemed as soon as I met them, like really dedicated. Um, and I, as I've done my course, I can really tell that that's come through. It's not just a show on the first day. That was a good thing. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, you highlighted something really important there as well about A-levels not being the only option, because a lot yeah. of people I think would be in agreement that, that they felt that that was their only option. We yeah. do other weight pathways that you can get get qualifications. We've got T levels, we've got vocational courses, we've got apprenticeships, so many other ways of getting your educational future. And for those of you that are interested watching today, we do have videos all on our website that explain in more depth each of those study pathways. So make sure you check those out. Um, Imi, did you have something to add? Um, yeah, so when I went there for the open evening, I just really enjoyed it. And um, like Jen said, like the teachers, everyone was just so welcoming. And um, also like 
everything like the environment as well open access has really helped me like with all the computers just where you can study and even the library because at home I, I'm useless at studying I just don't have the motivation but having that there like on the um like in the grounds it's just amazing you can stay there afterwards like the opening hours are really good as well that's great uh Tom so when we were looking around colleges um, we went to a couple and then we went to Chichester and the first thing I noticed was that everybody was extremely helpful. Walking down from the train station there were people asking um, what, the, what we were looking for and, and directing us because I'm pretty sure the first open day we went to we got completely lost and ended up walking around the, uh, down the road around a roundabout and found our way to the back of the college. But even there, there were people um, giving out maps, there were maps on boards. And when we finally found our way to a classroom we wanted to, um, which did take a while, um, everybody was really helpful. And just one, just like, it was like they had all the answers that we needed. Every question we asked, they were happy to answer. Absolutely, it's, I think that's really important for people to know is that just the college, it, there, is, there is a very community feel there. Everyone's really friendly to each other. There's no need to be nervous about not knowing where you're going because there will always be someone around that can help you out. Um, Sophie, do you want to add to that as well? Sorry, Sophie Sargent. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, definitely we are a very big campus, but there are just, there's always someone around to help. And as soon as you come into the college, you'll be able to find your way. Um, you normally always have like one block where your lessons are going to be as well. So you tend to um, focus in one area as well, which is really good. Um, and yeah, I think it's just, I mean, when I first came to the college, Chichester was my first and only choice because I just knew the amazing results it got. I knew the pathways it would lead me into. Um, I didn't go down that pathway because I found a new pathway in Chichester College and I'm now working there, which is just absolutely amazing. Um, but there's just so much and so many great opportunities that you can get at Chichester College. Just to um, sort of add to this, this point of the sense of community, it's something that I'm really missing and looking forward to when we are able to go back onto site. And um, what's some of the things that you're most looking forward to when we can eventually get back on campus? Uh, Jen. Hi, OK, so um, obviously Sophie, as student is that obviously runs a lot of different activities as well, which she can go over, but coasters as well. So Coasters is like the massive communal area, not very Corona safe at the moment, but normally it's really nice. Um, I think a major thing was um, you get to kind of mix with everyone. So uh, you can make friends on your course um, and getting in there and knowing everyone's in the same like boat as you being new and moving to a new place um, as well. You can sit with other people on Coasters, obviously not now with Corona, but also the food. The food is really good at college. You've got a Costa in the college and you've looked Mackey's is 10 minute walk away. So that's what I'm going to miss is like the little nice areas and the food. <laughs> uh, yeah, just to, just to highlight there about um, the, the COVID situation, there are measures in place to make it as safe as we possibly can and um, everyone's wearing face masks in communal areas um, and hopefully by the time that you join us here in September those restrictions will be lessened but we know that we're doing everything in our power to make it as safe as possible for you in college and um, I like what you said about Costa there as well that's one thing that I'm not missing because my desk is about 30 steps away from Costa and that can get a little bit dangerous yeah it does have the bank account but it is really really helpful as well <laughs> yeah definitely it's a good it's a good pick me up of an afternoon for sure and um, Sophie Sargent do you want to go next yeah so obviously my role focuses a lot on what you can get the extra stuff out of college so I'm really missing running all of my events normally I would be in coasters on some big inflatable um, normally it's like a surfboard or like a rodeo ball and I'm always thrown off 
because I have terrible balance, but everyone always laughs at me and it's just a bit of fun. Um, I'm missing, you know, seeing my student executives. So they're the student leaders. So they have a really big role in college because we are really passionate about student voice. So it's not like any other college or school where they say, yeah, we listen to you, we listen to you and never actually do anything. We have so many student leaders that are engaged and they're on top of things and they meet with the governors, they meet with the group leaders, they run events. So everything we do, we do, we get students involved. Um, I'm missing being able to hold my conferences in person. So we have student conferences for our reps where they come and they tell us all of the amazing things that are happening and we get some feedback and then they tell us some of the things that they're having issues with. Normally it's the Wi-Fi because um, sometimes because there's so many people on site, the Wi-Fi can be a little bit slow, but we're working with the, the director of computer services and he is on it. He is fixing it for us. So by the time you get back in college, it's going to be amazing. Speedy I can wise, promise that. So. Like <laughs> um, yeah. Sophie Eve. Yeah, I was really just going to like second what both of you just said. Uh, Costas is, uh, Coasters is amazing. Um, the community feel in Coasters is amazing like you just sitting with your friends uh, from your course or just from like uh, the other school you've been to and just sitting down and the food is amazing and I get lunch there every every week and it's amazing and it's really fun how like almost every week there's something happening there like I remember one time walking in and there's just like a massive like ball there and like they're like riding on this like ball and there's always like a fair going on or something like that and it's it's really fun community to be in Brilliant answer. And Tom, do you want to finish off that question? Yeah, the one thing I'm missing the most is being around people that have the same interests as me. So, um, because at home, I can't really discuss what I've been doing in college without having to explain it extremely in depth. And it, it's, it was nice at college just to be able to um, talk about it and people instantly know what you mean. And you can just say like, I added this and that, or I scripted that and they know instantly what you did it on, what lesson it was and why. I suppose that's the thing with doing quite a technical course is that if you try to explain it to me or some someone in your family, I'm not going to have a, I'm not going to have a Scooby what you're on about. But if the people that are on your same course, they're going to know where you're coming from and just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. <laughs> Um, so we've got the next question. I'm going to come to Abby first on this one. Um, what would your normal college week look like? So my normal college week, it would be from Mondays to Wednesdays. So it's only three days, but that means I have more time at home to do some extra stuff I need to do. So maybe get some of my assignment work done. If I need to, I can come go into town, maybe go to coasters or into the um, for, like library and do some extra work there. But also on Tuesdays because we have a workshop so we can make set and like build stuff, which I find quite cool. And um, so half of us will on Tuesdays afternoon, we'll go do some some really cool set building inside the workshop. And I just find it really fun. What's it like being in essentially a real theatre within the college uh, within the college campus as well? I feel like it gives me a good experience of what to expect when I leave college. Because of course it's fully equipped, it's got all the lighting, it's got all the sound, everything that I'll need for when I leave. So it's definitely very helpful to have it there ready for me when I get back. Amazing. Uh, Sophie? Just kind of jumping off of like Abby talking about the theatre, there were so many real life experiences for all of the courses. So like the hair and beauty, they have all the salons and oh my God, they're amazing. I love them. I always take my visitors there when I go. Um, there's obviously the construction sites. It's like a proper construction site and there's like loads of different things that they can do. Um, I know in the like uh, STEM department in computing they've got loads of motor vehicle workshops and there's there's always cars around for them to work on in computing they've got all the VR headsets so you get to use loads of fancy equipment and there's just so many real life experiences that you get to do that you wouldn't get in like your high school or another college that doesn't have the same resources it's just an extra element onto that classroom experience so you're getting hands-on 
with with those facilities. That's great. Does anyone else? Uh, Imi, let's come to you. You're muted, my love. <laughs> Sorry. Um, doing childcare. Um, I really enjoy the fact that two days a week we get to go to placement and um, my favourite placement was working with um, the nursery age, so two to four. And I really enjoyed that. And I'm sure Sophie and um, Ruby will agree on that. And um, it's nice that we also have two and a half days a week at college as well. So sharing the same interests and we normally discuss what um, fun stuff happened at placement and our experience and stuff like that. And um, I also love the fact that you can stay in the college, like you can go to coasters and carry on with your work or use open access. Just because you're not in for teaching doesn't mean you can't go in to use the resources and stuff. So I like that. That's a really important point as well. Everything that is available to you during teaching time is all of the time as well. You've got that chance for independent study, but you don't have to go home to do it. You can do it on site. That's really important to note. Um, Sophie. Uh, yeah, also to uh, note the independence that is uh, like given to you. Like uh, some lessons, because uh, our course is assignment based, um, we can just get. Um, sorry, um, we can just get given like time to go to open access or uh, do something like that, where we don't necessarily have the teacher in the room with us. We can just go and focus on our work, work in a more relaxing environment. Great answer, uh, Ruby. Did you have something to add there? I was going to say the exact same thing as Sophie that um, on our days that we're in college, we have a really good mixture between like face to face lessons and then the rest of the day to sort of follow up on that thing that we've been learning or do work on our assignment. If we've got an assignment set, it's just a really good mix of like independence and you can easily go back and ask a question during the day. They're just always there for you throughout the day, even if you're not directly in their lesson, which is really helpful. Do you find um, it gives you more focus towards your studies, being able to have that time where you're in lesson with your tutor or your course leader and then having that time straight after to perhaps do some independent sub study? Does that give you a little bit more more focus and motivation, I suppose? Yeah, definitely, because um, it's fresh in your mind and you're right there. You've got all the resources, you've got open access. There's the library with all the books that you wouldn't necessarily have at home um, and as well like the online library has been really helpful so it's just being at college and around all these resources having the laptops you can just get straight on with something that um like Imogen was saying it's a bit hard to concentrate at home sometimes so being I think we're all a bit sick of being at home now as well so maybe it'll be a good thing that we've got all of these areas to go to uh, going forward uh Jen so yeah, I was just going to add on to the travelling aspect of getting to college. Um, so for me, I live an hourish away from college um, and it's really simple to get there. There's nothing to be scared of. I know travelling for the first time because normally you're near your secondary school. So when you start going to college and going a bit further, it can be a bit scary. Um, but the train station is literally a 10 minute walk away um, and so is the bus station. So it's really, really simple. Um, and a lot of people do actually travel. People come from quite far away anyway. So don't feel like if you're coming and you're by yourself, don't be worried about that. Um, and also another thing that I would say about my timetable time is about lesson like length. So typically you'd be in a 50 minute lesson. I think normally is the average for like GCSE level. Um, but in my case, my lessons are about like three or two and a half hour lessons. Um, which sounds like a lot, but don't be scared. It actually lets you get a lot more focus um, and they monitor it like to you. So they'll give you a break if they think like it's a bit too much today. We've covered a bit too much information. They need a bit of a break. So yeah, don't be scared about when you get your timetable or like looking at what a timetable could look like. Three hours really doesn't feel that long when you're studying one subject. It doesn't feel overwhelming at all. Okay. That's really good advice. Uh, Tom, do you want to add? Just adding on to what Jen said, really. Um, it's like the train near me 
um, you, it's just you don't have to change at all. You just get on. Um, it's half an hour, I think. It's normally half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on how the trains are running that day. But um, the, once you get there, it's like a five minute walk. The cycle path leads right up to the college and you can either walk around because it's an open campus. So you can just walk around the outside or you can go to your classroom through reception, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's nice to have that option for when it's um, tipping it down with rain. I was, was going to say, when it's raining, <laughs> you want those little sneaky cut throughs. <laughs> um, Sophie, you had your hand up as well. I was just going to add a point of sometimes people, especially if you're travelling from a little bit further away, travelling can get quite expensive, but the college is here to support you financially as well. So we do have our student finance team, which um, your student tutor, who's your pastoral support, so they take care of all of your um, non-academic needs. They can direct you to the student finance team and I believe you can actually make your application online before you start so you can start getting those bursary payments to help you get into college because we're because we know that sometimes financial difficulties can affect your learning. So we want to make sure that we um, take away any of those um, barriers to learning. Exactly, we want to make sure that we've got equal opportunities for everyone, no matter what their situation. Um, Sophie, have you got something to add to that as well? You're muted. Sorry. Um, I've actually got the bursary myself and I can say like how easy the process is. Um, I just spoke about it to my um, tutor, um, went to student support, uh, filled out a form and then a few weeks later I got given it and it's uh, really easy. Um, you get given it every term, I think, and uh, it is really helpful for travelling, um, especially when, personally me, I um, haven't really travelled. I didn't really travel a lot before going to college and um, yeah, it really, really did help. Those those costs can rack up as well. It's funny, <laughs> funny how quickly it all tots up and then to have, I suppose to have that stress taken away from you makes our whole process a lot easier for you. Brilliant. Um, so we'll move on to the next question. I'm going to pick up on uh, one of the points that was made in the last question, which is flexibility of time. Um, so uh, Sophie Sardin, can you tell us a bit more about the student union and what sort of activities and enrichment um, activities we have going on? Yeah, so like some of the others have said, there's normally always something going on every week um, in coasters and some big event. Normally we have lots of different charity events. So as I said before, there might be some big inflatables. There might be a bake sale. There might be myself and the student experience team and the student execs dressed up in funky costumes. We also have our um, a weekly enrichment program. So we have over 25 free clubs for you to attend and these are free for all of our students um so we have things like football running clubs netball so like lots of different sports activities but we've also got non-sport activities so we have beginners guitar so we have an instructor we have guitars you just come along and you can learn to play um guitar we have some arts and craft clubs and there's lots of opportunities if that if the clubs that you want to do aren't there, there's lots of opportunities for us to put those clubs on for you. Um, we also have a big international programme as well, which is just amazing. This is one of the reasons why I would definitely recommend coming to Chichester, because you will not get these experiences at any other college. Um, so we have our yearly Kenya trip where we spend two weeks out in Nakuru and we work on a school that was built by the college to support all of these underprivileged children. We go over there, we spend two weeks with the kids, we work on the school, you do some lessons with them, you do some games with them. It's loads of fun and it's an absolutely life changing experience. Um, we do some fun trips as well, so you can go to New York, you can see all the different sites. Um, so there's loads of international trips as well as we do like day trips to Thorpe Park and go-karting and the Harry Potter studios. So there's loads to get involved with. That's great. I think we're all looking forward to, to some of that. We're, we all want to get away. We all want to have some fun and hopefully in September we can we can start bringing some of those things back. Um, I'm going to come to 
Um, I'm going to come to Kieran. Uh, you're doing a slightly different uh, course than, than the others here, um, but I want to know from all of you eventually, but what's the favourite thing that you found about your course? I think um, the best thing is probably the fact that it prepares you for uni before you get in there. So I've already learned how to reference properly. I'm already at the point, so a few months in re learning to read academic papers. So the, the first year or so of uni will hopefully be um, fairly easy. Um, I like that it's very challenging and it's a mix of both assignments and exams. So yeah, it's like it's like A-levels and BTECs kind of combined. Um, I find that's very helpful for learning stuff because you have to keep it, uh, you keep it in your head a lot better. Um, I think that's it. Great answer. Who, uh, anyone else got a favourite thing about their course? Jen, lovely. Uh, yeah, OK, so I'm doing obviously biomedical. Um, so a part of it is just doing your basic biology, chemistry, physics. Um, but with that, you get to do like all the experiments that were like, oh, it's a bit too much at GCSE. You get to do it biomedical when, when you're at this level and it's very exciting. Um, yeah, so there's loads of labs from college that you can move around with your class um, and actually really good resources as well. So we have like really expensive microscopes, let me tell you. I've just done an assignment on them. They're pretty cool. Um, and also how the course is structured as well. So it's I always thought BTEC was not a path into uni because I don't know. I just think that's how I was programmed. Um, but actually how it is done. So, yeah, like Kieran said, with exams and coursework, that's how it would be at uni. It's not a 100 percent exam like an A-level would be. So it prepares you anyway for wherever you're going next. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I would say. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's hear from, uh, I think Ruby was next. Yeah, so for me, it's just about being around like minded people, because obviously everyone's chosen this course because it's something that they're passionate about. And that just really shows um, when you have to do group work and just in the general work ethic, like everyone's excited to learn about the new topic. Um, yeah, and you make friends really quickly because you're all interested in the same thing. And I think that's definitely my favourite thing about the course. It's social aspects of your course as well. That's really important. Um, Abby, let's come to you. So I think my favourite thing would probably be that I've done some work experience for my course. So I've actually had the opportunity to work in an actual theatre and find out what it's actually like to work behind stage and do and work with professionals who have done this for a while so I'm actually able to gain some good experience for when I actually leave college so I think that was probably one of the best things I've done so far. Brilliant. Uh, Imi? Um, same as Ruby really and um, the fact that you go into class and you can just share all your experiences with um, your class friends about what's happened in um, placement so when I've gone into the nursery one day come back and we've used the um, ideas they've done for activities to write about in our assignment and I think that was really useful um, but yeah just sharing like your interest is really nice as well. I suppose that must be nice as well when when you're in that environment where they've applied what you've learned out on placement that gives you a little bit of context and you sharing each other's experience gives you that broader knowledge as well and um, so that, that's a really good answer. Um, let's do, we were, we were talking about um, student finance uh, earlier. Um, there are other additional services that the colleges provide, for example, Progression Plus or even down to your student tutors. Have any of you utilised those services and what was your experience with that? Let's go to Ruby first. Yeah, so I use Progression Plus to really set me up for this course because um, I just dropped out of doing my A-levels because they just weren't right for me and I just came into college. I had no idea what sort of course I wanted to do. I just had the general idea that I wanted to do something to do with education. So I just went into Progression Plus and explained to them what I want to do and they sat down with me and went through what this course is, so childcare and education, explained it all to me and said how they think that's the perfect thing for me and told me where it could lead me. 
and they helped me with the application process and they were just really friendly and helpful and I think without them I would have found it a bit more difficult to work out what I wanted to do and apply so I think definitely use Progression Plus if you need the support because they were really helpful. Well good guidance in that team haven't they? Uh, Kieran let's come to you. Uh, Progression Plus helped me out so much even before I started my actual course because um, I had to get my uh, personal statement done for uni and we were having correspondence about that in the summer holidays beforehand so I had time to do it and then when I got the um, invitation um, to have my interviews they helped me out with interviews for there so hopefully I'll get the places that I got. Uh, I'm going to come to Jen next. you're on mute okay that's the first time i've done it that's quite impressive wow okay um yeah so yeah like ruby i used progression plus um after i did a levels at chichester and like i said before um and i was so lost afterwards i was like this is the end i've got nothing else to do i've used up my options at chichester um, and they were like just calm down what do you like and they gave me like a whole range of courses that i didn't even know existed um, saying that I could get in, um, which was insane to start off with. Um, also, during my course, I used my student tutor, which we've like covered a bit before. Um, but going from the GCSEs to college, it's a change, obviously, in amount of work. So, although you're on one specialised subject doing a BTEC, you're also doing, you are doing a lot of work, um, and having someone know how much work you're doing and able to support you if you are a bit stressed that I'm like oh I can't do this it's too stressful and they work through it and they can either get you extensions um, and just really have someone on your side which I think is really important um, and also another person that I've used at the college is the student union you can literally go in and ask for volunteering opportunities so I think a major thing for applying to university is having experience um, and having local volunteering opportunities and work experience that you can do and just having someone to go and talk to that knows everything about it is really helpful as well. So there's just so many people you can talk to that all literally know everything about what they're meant to. So <laughs> that's the best thing. Perfect. Do you have a follow up for that Sophie Sargent? Yeah, I mean, um, that's what we're here for at the Student Union. Um, we are normally the signposters for people as well. Um, but as well as like volunteering, obviously like the student voice aspect, if you are having issues or anything, because realistically, not everything is going to be 100% perfect and that is OK. Um, but you can always come and talk to us. Our office is always open and we will we're normally able to find a solution relatively quickly, whether that is going to talk to your student tutor, your head of learning or even going to talk to the CEO. We're all one big family here. Everyone is here to help you. And I think, I mean, these guys have covered most of like the other resources that um, that we use, but um, we've also got like the library. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about that, but there are so many books. There's two floors to the library for one. Um, and then you've also got open access, which is a massive computer room. And some of the computers have got specialist software. So a lot of our like um, creative courses, so like, uh, trying to think of one you've got like creative media or computing require specialist software that can be quite pricey but we have got it on the computers in open access for you to use um, when you're in lessons or out of lessons as well so there are so many resources available make sure you take advantage of them that's that's the point isn't it is that we've got all of these services available to you use them that is a really good point. Um, and finally, I'll come to Sophie Eve. Uh, yeah, because I didn't want to go to uni before I started college, I really had no idea about the university pr process and personal statements. And I went to Progression Plus and I sent in my personal statement like 10 times and uh, they checked it and checked it again. And it was finally at a point where um, they had hardly any comments on it and um, yeah they really helped when I was writing that. Really really good really good that you're utilising those services 
Um, my last question is going to be twofold and I'm going to come around to the group to everyone for this. So I've got what was your biggest fear before starting college and what piece of advice would you give to students who are applying now? Um, I'm going to start off with Imi. OK, so when I am um, before I joined, I was just so nervous I wasn't going to meet anyone. Um, I remember going a couple of days before the actual starting day and that was really good. You got to meet some people that were on your course. Um, but on the first day, it was amazing because we just all bonded over exercises um, that our teachers gave out for us to do. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter that you don't know anyone to start off with because you just meet people along the um, side of it. And um, my advice would be just to um, have a plan each week I got myself a whiteboard and um, become a bit obsessed with it now. Just write down my daily routine and then um, I like to just tick it off when I've finished it. So for college um, day, just write down um, what you're going to do afterwards when you get home to keep on top of like all your assignments and stuff and coursework. Really good to have a, a plan and a structure to keep on top of everything, isn't it? Um, Sophie Eve. Uh, yeah, uh, one of my biggest fears was uh, that I wasn't really going to make any friends. I, when I uh, signed up to the course, I didn't know anyone from my uh, year or class that was going to go into childcare, and uh, it was a uh, really scary because I didn't know if I was going to make any friends. But um, like Amy said on the welcome day, um, I met up with a group of girls, and I like that they're, they're now like my best friends, and you do make a lot of friends like that. It's really hard not to make friends. And um, one of the uh, biggest pieces of uh, advice I would give is uh, don't just pick a course uh, because your friends are doing it. Because um, I had that a bit of dilemma when I did, was picking a course. It was either do this course because my friends are doing that or do childcare because I have a passion for it. But I'm so glad I picked childcare because I really, really like it and it's something that I really want to do in the future now. And that's a really important point to make as well, is that don't choose something based on what your friends are doing and um, do something that you're passionate about and something that you're going, going to want to do in the future, because you're going on to the course where people are going to have the same interest, the same passion for something. So you're, you're going to make friends with those people and you'll still keep your friends that you that you made in school. It's just about widening your circle and introducing them to each other. Even that's always that's always a bit fun, isn't it? <laughs> um, Kieran. I think, yeah, if I had any advice, um, it would be read around your subject area. If you have any extra information, that's going to help you a lot when learning it, if you already have some of it, and it's going to look great on your personal statement when you're able to mention books and certain things that are happening. Um, and get before a couple of weeks before you start, get a, your sleep in routine so you can. It's very easy to get up and get to college at the right time and be there and be able to learn and take in information properly. Lots of people nodding in agreement. <laughs> Um, do you have anything to add, Jen? Hello, I'm unmuted this time, right? Um, yeah, so I mean, we've talked about course, like courses picking other than what your friends are doing, and um, but also what you actually enjoy doing. So the advice that I got was do what you're good at, and then when you get to uni, you get to do what you enjoy, and you think, okay, I can do it for two years, get good grades, and then get to do what I'd like to do. But in reality, two years does feel like a long time when you're studying only like three subjects. So please make sure you're doing the ones you really enjoy. Because um, that was one of my fears was being stuck in a course and not being able to move. But we've already said flexibility wise, you get a child period on your subjects that you can easily move out of. So don't feel panicked about that. That would be my advice. Always a good start to go with something that you are interested to begin with. It's not. Oh, like you know, you might want to get an A in like I don't know <laughs> politics. And you hate politics. It just doesn't work out for two years. <laughs> uh, Ruby. Yeah. So similar to what other people have said, um, I was worried about starting because it was such a change. I mean, the campus is much bigger. Um, than I was used to from school and I was also worried about not knowing anyone on my course but 
at the end of the day, you're all in the same boat. I mean, our lecturer did so many icebreakers. I think the first couple of weeks were just about us getting to know each other, getting to know our lecturers, so that when it actually came to start learning, everyone was getting on well, everyone was comfortable and settled. So it was just a really good introduction to the course. And I'd say for my advice, um, if you ever have any concerns, you should definitely speak to your lecturers or your student tutor because they're all there for you. Um, they want you to do well. So if you have like any issues with stress or finance or any other things that we've spoken about, um, they're there to support you and make sure that you do well at the college. So don't be afraid to reach out if you need that support. Thanks for that. Um, Tom, what do you have to say on this point? Well, I, I came from a background of being home educated. So my main fear was probably um, re-entering a large group of people because um, it would just be me and my brother up to then. But it, it was fine. Everybody was extremely friendly. And I, so I think the first interaction I properly had with someone was when I was trying to find a place to sit and have lunch. So I just asked, is it all right if I sit here? And, and now we're good friends. Um, we normally sit together and have lunch um, normally every day at college. Oh, that's lovely. Um, what, would, what would your piece of advice be? Probably just not to worry too much about making friends or getting to know people because you all have the same interest. It will just sort of happen by itself. You'll just um, normally just start talking to someone because they're doing the same thing as you um, so they can relate to it and then you'll just form a friendship out of that. That's a lovely answer. Um, Abby? Well, my biggest fear was because my course is very technical, I was worried about using all the equipment and like learning how to use everything properly. But of course, the lecturers are there to teach you, so they helped me learn how to use the equipment and how to like, learn from it properly and everything I needed to know. I think for my advice, it'd probably be choose a course that you enjoy and you feel passionate about because you can always change it halfway through if you feel like you want to change or you just don't like what's going on and just enjoy what you're doing. That's that's the greatest point as well is enjoy what you're doing as, as well. And um, it's all very well getting good grades in certain subjects, but if you're not passionate about it, that's not going to be the pathway that's necessarily going to be right for you. Uh, Sophie Sargent. Yeah, so I had quite a few fears before starting um, college I came from a very small school so we had like 240 people in my entire school and then going to a college where there was at least 5,000 people on site a day was just like completely overwhelming but as soon as I got to college just the environment it was just like this is where I belong I should be here and I think there was a lot of fears about obviously we were like kids back in school and then coming to college you feel like an adult and that like, you're treated like an adult and it's just such a nice experience and I think my piece of advice for everyone would be make the most out of your time at college it's not just about academics this is the start of your life right here and there are so many fantastic opportunities to get involved with so make the most of it have fun and enjoy college fabulous advice Thanks guys for all of your answers. They've, they've been really helpful today. Um, I really hope that you watching have found today's session useful to hear from the people that were in your position not that long ago. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Applications are open on our website, chichester.ac.uk and we're really looking forward to seeing you in September. Bye guys. <laughs>